Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'd like to talk about automatic cross-referencing in Microsoft Word. I use Word a lot for writing technical documents and reports and most of the time I need to include a figure, table, or other object within the document that I would like to reference elsewhere in that same document. Today I'd like to look at both the right and the wrong ways to go about doing this. So, First, why don't we start with the wrong way to do this? And I think it's actually easiest to do this by example. So let's whip up a small example document that we can use to illustrate the problem and the eventual solution. So I've just started Word and have a blank document here to illustrate what we're talking about. So to make this look like a sample paper or a report, why don't we go ahead and add a few sections. Maybe we'll have an introduction. Maybe we'll have a nomenclature and glossary. Maybe we'll have a procedure. Maybe we'll have a results section. And you know, this seems like a reasonable skeleton. So let's go ahead and change these to be headings instead of just normal text here. And we can go ahead and get started. So, you know, you might start writing your paper. So for example, in the introduction, we could say that this paper describes the development and flight testing of a small unmanned aerial system or UAS. Let's go ahead and fix a few of these typos here. Um, oh, you'll notice, I guess we, we use this acronym UAS. So maybe what we should do here in the nomenclature and glossary section is let's go ahead and create a table here where we can start defining what all these terms mean. So for example, let's go ahead and say acronym here. We'll have the definition. We'll have a, maybe a comment over here. Oops, let's right click and fix the spelling of that. We'll make this totally bold up here. And then we can say one of the acronyms we've used here was uh, UAS. This stands for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. And in the comment, I don't know, this is also known as a drone, right? Another acronym that might be useful is maybe, how about FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, and so on and so forth. So um, again, here, the procedures. Uh, the procedures for the flight test were as follows. We can make something really, really simple. Let's go ahead and start a numbered list. Maybe uh, prep the aircraft, launch the aircraft, gather data, land. Something very, very simple. And then finally here in the results, maybe what we might want to do here is um, let's go ahead and insert a picture here to illustrate what actually happened during this flight test. So let's go ahead and go ahead and first come up here to insert pictures and I've got a nice picture of showing some of the data maybe for example this is the actual trajectory of the vehicle so let's go ahead and insert that and I'm actually gonna make this a little bit smaller so everything fits on one page so we can see it at one time and uh, maybe let's go ahead and uh, maybe I'm gonna let me zoom out a little bit this is zoomed in a little bit too much it makes it hard to fit on one screen Okay, this is looking pretty reasonable here. So what we might want to start doing is we've got a decent skeleton of a paper. So we might want to start being able to refer to, for example, this picture that we just illustrated in the body of text that we're writing. So for example, we might want to say something like the uh, flight path of the vehicle is shown below in whatever figure number this is. So at this point, let's take a look at the wrong way to go about cross-referencing this before we look at the eventual solution. So what I see a lot of people do, and again, let me emphasize, this is the wrong way to go about doing this. They'll see that, oh, you know what I need to do is I need to label this figure so I can refer to it. So what they'll do is they'll maybe just hit enter and say, figure one, the flight path of the vehicle, right? They might even get fancy and change the styling of this. They might make it look italic and maybe let's let's make it a little bit smaller. And um, yeah, that looks reasonable. So I've got this uh, figure one. And now what I can do is in the body of the text, I can go up here and I can say the flight path of the vehicle is shown below. And then they'll also just go and type in the word figure one. Okay. Now. At first glance, this seems reasonable here, but hopefully for any of you that are maybe software developers, um, you, red flags should be going off in your, in your head right now because you're seeing I'm hard coding in the number figure and I'm hard coding the, the label and the figure number of the actual drawing or diagram that I'm referring to. You could also make the same mistake with tables, right? I could come up here and I could try to manually 
go ahead and label this table. I could do something silly like say table one, various abbreviations used in this paper, right? And again, let's go and make it the same style as this one. So I'll just select this style, click on the format painter, and I'll apply that exact same formatting here to this. And once again, this looks reasonable because what some people you might be able to do is you might come up here and um, let's see. Oh, here, here's one of these abbreviations. I might want to draw the reader's attention to say, if you don't know what this acronym means, come over to this table. So again, the wrong way to do this is you could go and say something like C T A B L E one for definition, right? Okay. Now, this looks okay, but the reason that this is ro the wrong way to do it is because none of these figure numbers are automatically cross-referenced. So to illustrate where this can go wrong, let's go ahead and say what happens if I wanted to modify the paper here or insert or move figures around such that the numbering actually changes. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so to illustrate the problem, let's say that maybe up here in the procedures section, I wanted to add a picture of the aircraft. So why don't I go ahead and again, let's do this the wrong way. I'll come in here and I'll go ahead and insert a picture. And let's insert a picture of the plane that we're interested in. So I put the plane here. Again, let's go ahead and make this thing smaller so everything fits on one page here. And again, let's do this labeling the wrong way. Oh, crud, it was not small enough. Let's get that other, let's make it smaller so everything fits on one page and we can see the problem. Okay, so again, here we go. Let's go ahead and label this picture the wrong way. So I'll say figure two, the airplane, uh, aircraft used in the experiment. Okay, again, we can go ahead and make the, the formatting the same. Okay. And then up here in the procedure, I could go ahead and say, um, prep the aircraft, see figure two. Now, you can kind of see why this is going wrong here, because one, my figure numbering is not in order here. In other words, the first figure that I come across is not labeled one. It's actually labeled two, because that's the direction or the order in which I inserted this, and I'm just kind of incrementing my figure numbers here. So that's one problem here, and as you can see, um, what I really want is so that all of the figures will auto update depending on which order they appear in the document, not in which order I actually inserted them as I was creating the document here. And the problem might seem trivial here where I've just got this one page paper, but imagine the situation where you've got a 20 or 30 page document. Maybe you're working with multiple people, you're writing the introduction and the procedure, maybe your partners are writing the results or other sections, and if everyone is using this bad improper way of doing uh, figure numbering and table numbering by the time you try to merge everything together you're gonna have multiple people referring to the same figure number and everything is gonna get um, basically all mixed up so as you can see this is the wrong way to go about doing this uh, numbering and auto cross referencing so what I like to do now is we saw what the problem is using the incorrect method let's try to fix this using uh, words inherent auto cross referencing system so to fix this let's go ahead and first delete all of these places where we have hard coded the figure number so here's one and also we're going to delete these places where we refer to this thing improperly in the sense that we hard coded a reference in here so I'm going to delete this as well again here's a bad caption that we hard coded I'll delete that I'm going to delete this and finally, let's delete this uh, table caption that we made. And finally, here's our other hard-coded place where we refer to um, an object here. So now that we've deleted all these, what we can do is let's use words automatic captioning and cross-referencing system. So to caption this table the proper way, let's go ahead and just select the entire table. And now I'm going to right-click on this and just say insert caption here. Now, when you do this, we get to pick what type of a caption is this? Is it a figure? Is it a table? Where do I want the uh, caption? So this is actually a table, so I'm going to change this from figure to table. It automatically changes the position to be above the desired object. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, if you notice, we've got this thing that says table one, and I'm free to now add a small caption as well. I could say, again, colon, various abbreviations used in this paper. OK, 
okay? And now, the only difference now is, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see this more clearly here. Let me move my cursor back. Back, back, back. You'll notice nothing's changed, nothing's changed, nothing's changed, until I come over to this one symbol. And if you notice, as soon as I move my cursor in front of it, you see it's kind of highlight, highlighted or um, in gray. This is showing that this is actually an automatically updated table or figure or cross-referencing number. So it's not something that's automatically hard-coded in. Let's go ahead and do this with the other captions of the figures as well. So let me again zoom out so we can see everything in one page here. And I'll go ahead and do this for the two figures as well. So to caption a figure, I just go ahead and uh, left click on the, uh, excuse me, right click on the figure. And again, same thing, insert caption. Um, this is not a table, this is a figure here. And actually, you can even insert the uh, figure caption right here in this dialog box. So I could say, go uh, colon, the aircraft used in the experiment. Go ahead and sit, hit OK. And again, we get this automatic caption down here where everything is normal, normal, normal until I go over the figure number, which gets highlighted in gray, showing me that it's an automatic object. So same thing, let's come down here to this uh, trajectory picture or the flight path. I'll go ahead and again, right click on this, say insert caption. Um, it is figure number two. I'll go ahead and hit OK just to see something different. And again, I'll go ahead and just type in the caption right here. This is the flight path of the vehicle. Okay. Now, now that I've automatically uh, captioned the appropriate tables and figures, let's come back to the top of the document. And now here's where I want to go ahead and add a reference to this automatic object down here. So instead of typing in again, I could type in table one, but we saw earlier that that's the wrong way to do that. So that's not what I want to do. Instead, what I want to do is I want to use the automatic cross-referencing system. So to do that, I'm just going to come up here to references, cross-reference here. So my cursor is in the right position where I want that cross-reference to go, and you get this dialog box showing up, and it's showing you all of the different things that you can cross-reference. So I can cross-reference a bookmark, a footmark, endnote, equations, figures, aha, table. That's what I want to do. I want to refer to a table here in the document. So I'll click on this, and what do I want to reference? I could reference either the entire caption. So if I go ahead and hit insert right now, it's going to put in table one colon various abbreviations used in this paper, wherever my cursor was in the original document. That's a little bit verbose. I don't want the actual caption. I just want the thing to say table one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this drop down and I'm just going to say only label and number. And now when I hit insert, Notice here that table one was dumped into the main body of the paper. So I'm all done with this. Let's go ahead and close this dialog box. And I'll hit space one time just to make this look a little bit better. So again, you might think that we're back at the exact same place we were earlier when I was showing you the bad version. You might be thinking, why is this any better? Well, one reason that this is better is, again, you can move your cursor over and you'll notice, aha, this entire thing is highlighted in gray, meaning that it is an automatic object. This is going to allow me to do um, uh, quick navigation in the document. So, for example, if I hover over this, it just gives me a little hint that if I hold control and click, it will bring me to that object that I'm referencing here. So, that's all fine and dandy here. Let's go ahead and do something similar for the pictures or the figures that I inserted. So, here we go. Here's a reference where we wanted to go ahead and say, hey, reader, come out and check out figure number one. So, again, I'm going to come up here to insert cross reference. Or, I guess, once you get uh, a little bit familiar with this, you might want to use a set of um, shortcuts here. So, the shortcut to get there is you actually hit Alt and then N and then RF. And you'll get to that same location where the cross-referencing dialog pops up. Um, now, in this case, I don't want a table, so I'm going to go ahead and select figure. And now I get to pick which figure am I actually talking about. Well, it's figure number one. And we have that same problem or issue earlier. I don't want the entire caption. I just only want the label and the number. So I'll go ahead and hit insert. And there, great. Figure number one gets dropped in. So perfect. Let's go ahead and close this. And then let's do the last one down here. So again, I could go Alt N R F, or if you want, let's just do the old uh, clicking way. Let's go reference, cross reference. Now I want to actually refer to figure number two. It's already on label and number, so I'll hit OK. 
close. Great. So now at this point, everything is looking great and all of these things are automatically cross-referenced. Now, the main benefit of having this automatic cross-referencing system is, like we saw earlier, if you were to modify the document here, now with this system, I can insert figures or pictures or tables anywhere in the document willy-nilly and Word will automatically update all of the references and the numbers appropriately. So let's illustrate that right now. So let's actually assume that maybe I've got a partner that's working on this project with me here and they've already done some of the work themselves and I'm ready to incorporate those changes that they've made. So for example, I've got another document set up here that has a similar structure here. It has introduction, nomenclature, and glossary, but this is what my partner has written. So for example, let's say that they've um, gone ahead and maybe added a list of contributors to the paper or authors or another table that needs to go in section one of, the pa of this uh, paper. So now what's good about this is if they follow this automatic referencing scheme as you can see here when I click on uh, put my cursor there it's got a table one here so it's an automatically cross reference object I can simply just copy it or select all of this go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it into the paper here my original my master copy of the paper so I'll just go ahead and paste it right there oops sorry I want to paste and keep the formatting great and now I can do the similar uh, incorporation of let's say that maybe they have this picture of the aircraft payload that I also want to put into my master copy and you'll see luckily they were smart and they did the automatic cross-referencing as well so what I can now do is again go ahead and select all of this copy it and then here in the procedure document we'll just go ahead and paste that picture and maybe again let's make everything smaller so it all fits on one page we can kind of see what's hopefully going on do a little bit of formatting here whoops sorry all right okay okay now at this point you might say hey wait a second I thought you told me that word was gonna automatically update all of these figure numbers right now if you look at this this is a little bit uh, messed up so for example you see I have two number table ones Instead, what I would like to do here, oh, and, and furthermore, this this reference is kind of wrong here, right? It's saying uh, to find the definition of this abbreviation UAS, I should go to table one. Well, again, I've got two table one, so something is clearly screwy. Similarly, if I come down here to the figure numbers, I got two number figure ones, and I have this referring to, again, it's, it's, it's ambiguous. It's not entirely clear. So the way to fix this now is go ahead and you want to select everything in the document. So I'm just going to go ahead and control A, select everything. And you come to any one of these uh, automatic references. And if I right click on it, I can go ahead and say update field. And you'll see that, look at this, Word has gone ahead and changed this automatically. So now it's bigger, or sorry, table one table two and the reference here is now correct again so the definition or where the user the reader can go ahead and find the definition for this abbreviation is now in the appropriate labeled table two now let's come down here to the figures here and let's take a look at this as well and we see that hey check this out it's actually correct so the first figure that appears in the paper is actually figure one the second figure that appears in the paper is figure two even though it was added after this figure which is now correctly referenced as figure three and again all of the auto cross referencing or the verbiage in the body of the text is appropriately updated as well right figure two to figure two figure one to figure one so there you go this is an incredibly powerful way to create documents and allow the numbering of the figures tables section headers whatever you'd like here to be automatically updated appropriately so I hope that was helpful and hopefully you'll be able to use this when you're making a few of your own uh, documents. And I hope to catch you at our next video. Thanks so much. Bye.